Hey, Beulah family. In this season of remembering the death of Jesus and celebrating the resurrection of Jesus, we wanted to highlight the life of Jesus. As we walk with him in everyday life, we want you to see two things about his life that can shape and enrich our lives. Two things that show us the life Jesus intends for us. The first is how Jesus reframes family and how he remakes us into a family to display who he is and to do what he wants to do in the world. In three of the Gospels, the first words that Jesus hears after his baptism are, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. It's the intimate, loving language of family. Jesus and his Father and their spirit are the most loving family and the most beautiful community from whom all families on earth trace our origin and find our way forward as human beings. And then in Mark's telling of the story, the first words that he records Jesus as saying are, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. From this beginning, Jesus begins to create a new family. He invites people to come and see, and then he calls people to come and follow him, and then to come and be with him. He begins to show the kingdom of God through a new family of disciples. Matthew tells us that Jesus left Nazareth and he went to live in Capernaum by the sea. You see, he leaves his biological extended family and he begins his public ministry in the context of a new extended family that includes Peter and his wife, the brothers James and John, and of course the rest of his closest disciples, men and women whose names and stories we read. Have you ever thought about Jesus' everyday life? Have you considered who he shared his life with and how? If we've entered into Jesus' life through faith in him, wouldn't it make sense to look at how he lived as a model for how we would live? In Romans 8:29, Paul points out that God's plan is that everyone who believes in the death and resurrection of Jesus would be conformed to the image of his son so that he would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. The truth is, Jesus is forming a growing family. And not only are all who believe in Jesus spiritually related, through our common father, but he makes us a new family in tangible and real ways. Is that a reality for you? I think we can miss Jesus' intent because for us, community can mean so many things. When you hear people say community, what do they mean? Well, people might call Greater Edmonton our community, or they might call their neighborhood full of strangers and acquaintances a community. Or you might hear people say things like, I just love that we found a community of like-minded people who support us. And this sounds good to Christians because it makes us feel safe and comfortable. And there are aspects of this that can be good because we live immersed in a world that isn't, doesn't believe that Jesus is king and we need support. And yet Jesus has a bigger dream for us. When Jesus called people to come and be with him, he began life with an extended family where he would share life with them. And he'd, rub off on them. That's actually the word in Mark 3.14 when it says he called them to be with them. It literally means to rub off on them, which means that a Jesus-centered community is where we will learn and practice his life and his ways. It means that as we look to him together and his spirit works among us, he's going to rub off on us and we're going to rub off on one another. And just like it was in his first extended family, he will continue to change us to become more and more like him. Is this how you live? In Romans chapter 1 all the way through to chapter 11, Paul explains the gospel of Jesus Christ, that it is the power of God for salvation to those who believe. And then in chapter 12, he teaches some of the practical ways that we work out the gospel's impact in community. He says to the church, Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Hear what he says, brothers and sisters, that's plural. Present your bodies, that's plural, as a living sacrifice. That is singular. In view of what Jesus did for us, individually and corporately, we present our many lives as a singular, united body which is the demonstration expression of Jesus in the world. This is a together thing, and this is a true community that Jesus has in mind. 
It's where our love for people is genuine and real, where we actually act on love, where we see people, we listen closely to them, we know them, we encourage them, we help them. In Jesus' extended family, when we keep on gathering together again and again over the months and years, we rub off on one another and we become tangibly and functionally a part of one another. Jesus doesn't have any other plan than this. It's what he meant when he said, by your love for one another, they will know that you are my disciples. He also said, and by your oneness with one another, they will know that the Father and I are one. That extended family that Jesus first started in Peter's home has now become a richly diverse people, made one in Christ and sent by him into the world, gathering in local expressions of his family. This community is the way through which he intends to do everything else, demonstrating his love, knowing one another, caring, supporting, teaching, mentoring, growing, holding one another capable, teaming up together, discovering our unique gifting together, making his difference in the world together, demonstrating and proclaiming the gospel and the kingdom of God together. So friends, let's turn from the individualism of our culture and let's let Jesus' love reshape our perspective, rewire our way of thinking, and remake our life together. One of my favorite books on community is simply called Life in Community. The author, Dustin Willis, sums it up this way. Imagine people who love one another enough that they will not allow any need to go unmet, that they will be truthful enough to challenge and encourage each other no matter the cost. Picture a community that collectively finds joy even in the midst of tragedy. This is what happens at a table marked by love and cities transformed by the simple obedience of a small or mid-sized group of Christ followers who put others' needs above their own. Can you see it? A table where people bring their wins, their losses, their burdens, their tears, their gifts, their questions, and their pains, while serving others who bring their wins and their losses and their burdens and their tears, their gifts, their questions, and their pains. It's a beautiful table to belong to and give to. Imagine how greater Edmonton will be different when we choose to live this way. Are you already connected in a group? What would keep you from gathering regularly with that group? Letting your heart love those people and letting them love you. Are you not connected at all? Well, if you know someone who, has, who is, ask them if you could join them or let us help you. Email us at groups at beulah.ca and, and we'll help you find a community. Grace to you and we'll see you next time.